Hello, everyone, and welcome to another 30 for 30. That's right, where we are taking 30 days in the month of November to discuss Bruce Springsteen's studio and select live albums. And joining me today is my return guest. We are doing another Vinko. It is his afternoon my morning so thank you for spending part of your saturday afternoon with me how are you doing my friend i'm doing fine and a good day so not good afternoon not good morning good day to everyone who listens to, or good night whatever they may uh, play this session yeah so just in case someone has not heard the previous episode why don't you tell us a little about yourself I'm a graphic designer, father of two, happily married, part-time musician, or let's say a hobbyist. We just released our first album about six months ago with my band, Seven and Counting, and of course, a Bruce Springsteen fan. From Croatia, Europe, if that's of any significance for this yes. discussion. I think it certainly is significant. So yes, please, if you've not listened to the previous episode, we had such a wonderful and I'm so glad that we've gotten to be online friends. So tell us, Vico, what album do you want to talk about today? I picked up The Rising. Okay. Uh, I had a few records before that on my mind, but they were already booked. I was, yeah, I, I wasn't fast enough, but I had a real big doubt, The Rising and the Wrecking Ball. Okay. So the, the main reason why I went for The Rising was that, let's be honest, uh, Wrecking Ball was already the fourth album in a row with the E Street Band. Oh. It was normal. And The Rising was not. It was the first album with the band after how many? 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Since the title of Love. Yeah. And that was one reason. The other was what was happening a month before album came out it was devastating tragedy on september 11th and everything combined was it led me to appreciate it so much and it's one of my favorite albums uh Bruce springsteen discography at the end it was easy choice to go with the rising so can you tell the story about when you first heard about this and the experience of picking it up? Let's go a little bit, uh, a little bit more in the past. I've sure. heard my city of ruins a couple of years before that as a bootleg from some benefit show in Asbury Park, and it oh, was interesting. dedicated to Asbury Park. Yeah. I heard it. I had no idea how he came up with that song and the motives for inspiration for writing that. And somewhere I read it's a song about bringing Asbury Park back to life and back to, to, to the golden age of the city. It was pretty much, as I understand, understood, it was pretty much devastated city when he wrote that song. It was my hometown, but I'm not leaving. I'm rebuilding it. Yeah. And then everything would happen uh, on September 11th led to uh, Teleton and a charity, let's say show. It wasn't show. It was collecting money for victims of the tragedy. And he opened up that night with a very sparse, very gospel rendition of the same song. And all of a sudden, it wasn't about Asbury Park. It was about rebuilding not just the city of New York. It was about rebuilding us as a community. I, I can say us because that, that was a tragedy of such enormous scale. And uh, yeah. it affected the world as we knew at the moment. It was a song about rebuilding us as a people, as humans, as a society, and also the city that was ruined on that day. It, it really was transforming message. It was different of message within the same song thanks to the environment and uh, events and then when the album came out that rendition of my city of ruins was even elevated uh, on, on a pretty big scale so uh, 
Yeah. For me, that's my favorite song on the record to this day, especially because I heard three different uh, versions of the song in, in a, not so many uh, years apart. Each had different vibe and different uh, uh, message, but it's the same song from the beginning. It, it was fascinating for me. So I, I was looking for this record with a great impatience when I heard it, it's, it's about to come out. And one more thing, why I love this record and why I was looking for it with anxiety, let's say. Yeah. It was really, how can I say, when something like that happened, it's a beginning of chain of human reactions, normal reactions, like how could it be? Is it true? Who's to blame? Yeah. And unfortunately, if... You, you hear officials or media saying there there is a, a suspicion of some group of people, some nationality is maybe to blame. And it, it could lead to a wave of violence reactions against completely innocent people yeah. uh, because of their skin, of nationality, of, of religion, of whatever. And I was uh, very, it was a very big question for me. How would Bruce respond to that moment? Uh, what would be the message of his record uh, published in a big shadow of uh, September 11th? And I can't say I was surprised, surprised, but I was very pleased to hear his point of view, to see where he stands on that matter. And ultimately, he made a record without anger or, or wish for revenge, for payback, for pointing finger at anyone. And as an artist, he really realized very fast that uh, it happened, really. It's a big tragedy. It's so many innocent people lost their lives, and it, it affected their family, friends, and who is here now with us has to continue his life. How? That was, from my point of view, that was his question of, on this record, how to cope with the tragedy, how to continue our lives, and how to remain humans. And that yeah. was something I expected from Bruce Springsteen, but I, I wasn't sure if it would be his response with him. And it was. So I have similar, I had not heard the bootleg. I'm just not in the bootleg kind of spear. So my first experience was when I turn on that, the TV for that fundraiser and you, yeah. you hear Bruce, a prayer for our fallen brothers and sisters, and you hear that song yeah. and I was just blown away. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had a goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, I, I really shed a few tears just because of the way that song sounded that night. Yes. The way he sounded and the way the backing vocals performed very, how can I say it in English? It was, it was nice. It was a lot of measure for that moment. And it really blew my mind just as, as you experienced it the same way. It was a very touching moment. When I just was, I'm asked every once in a while, when did you become such a big Bruce fan? And I tell the story, but if there was a moment where, I think there's two moments where I went from the casual fan to a current obsessed healthy fan is when... He, when I saw him there in the band and I went, oh yeah, I had forgotten about Bruce, right? Because I had not bought H Human Touch or Lucky Town. I was busy raising my son, my wife, just we we're doing other things. And I went, oh yeah. And then in 2002 was the first show I saw, which was the Rising Tour. And I went oh my goodness this is everything i wanted it to be and so i have a special place in my heart for the rising 
for that reason, and then also the 10th year anniversary of the 9-11, my father died. Yeah, so 9-11 always has an extra sense of sadness because it is – the world is remembering this horrible act, and we are reminded that we lost our father that day. But yeah, just wonderful. Just said – Let's go through a little bit. Dealer's Choice. I've had people just talk in general about the album, pick a couple of songs to discuss, and then others have gone through track by track. So I'm good either way. Which way do you want to go? Before I start with the album, I'd like to, to mention what, what you just mentioned, something about uh, the tour of the record. It wasn't actual comeback they had a reunion tour they had right. a live in new york city they had it was a comeback of bruce springsteen and the history band but that was it was something we already heard or saw one way or another yeah, yeah. they were better than ever on the, the reunion tour that was yeah. really a, a celebration of, of getting back together uh, uh among the, the members of the band, as well as the, uh, the audience. But now we have something new on the set list. We had album produced by Horrible Act, an album that produced so many new fans, I believe, of Bruce Springsteen and H2 Band. When it all combined, came to Europe as a the rising tour. I, normally, I went on one show in Milan, Italy, and it was really mind blowing. It was it was what I expected to see finally from Bruce Springsteen and H3 Band because I was too young to go before they split up. And I, I've seen Ghost of Tom Jod tour uh, one show in Vienna, but I was waiting and hoping for something like that to happen again. And it happened to me on album of the Rising tour, and it was really mind blowing. And I really remember that tour vividly, or that show in Milan. It was a biblical rain that night. When it started, he played Waiting for a Sunny Day, Waiting yeah. on the Sunny Day. And during the song, the rain was heavier and heavier, and it was almost a, a biblical uh, rain by the end of the song. And I, I noticed he, he was walking around the stage at the end of the song, saying something to the band members. Mm -hmm. And I whispered to my wife, here comes something surprising. Uh, yeah. With Cool Stop the Rain by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Nice. Uh, it was a really amazing show, way over three hours long. And I really cherished that record. We can start, I don't know, we can pick a couple of songs well, uh, uh, and so, discuss uh, them if you like that. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to share with you is I... So I had never seen Bruce live before, and I had casually listened to The River, The Rising. I had not studied it, right? So when I got to the, the arena, I was not as familiar with all the songs on The Rising as I should have been. And what I've told people is I feel like I walked into a movie halfway through the film. Where I could tell it was a really great movie, but I knew I was missing something. And I often wish that I could go back in time now and enjoy and that concert. Yourself. Yeah, being prepared. And so the second time I saw him was Devils and Dust. And I had done my homework then, Vico. I had listened yeah. to Devils and Dust over and over again. So I knew every song that he was going to play from that CD. Um, yeah. All right. So let's pick a few songs. Let's you dealer's choice. Okay. Let's go with Nothing Mad. It wasn't my, my top five songs on this record at the beginning. Okay. But very soon after it became very dear song to me because it has very specific story not usual in yeah. rock and roll music when you talk about someone who did nothing but great as a human being as a professional as a good neighbor as a, as whatever everything he did in that song was great and yet he feels 
empty and he feels yeah. like he's someone to blame for something. And it, it's really PTSD all over the song. His anger is uh, directed to himself. His despair is directed to himself because he didn't do more or he didn't do this or that, but he did the most he could. And that's guilt. guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was guilty for being alive after everything he's been through. Yeah. And I don't know why, but that song really uh, sneak up on me after, after a couple of months. And the more I listen to it, it, it's going up and up on the scale of this record. Unusual topic, unusual point of view on, on uh, this. And yeah. I don't know. I, I can't imagine anyone but Bruce writing about it the way he did on this okay. song. Yeah. And it was really interesting for me to hear that perspective of someone who is feeling bad about doing good thing on a bad day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... I, I think it's a very complex song. Yeah. The idea that you, I think a little bit of survivor guilt also, but has a little bit of the feeling of the end of Schindler's List where the actor is going, I could have done so much more. Like he was yeah. not focusing on what he had done, just focusing on what he didn't do. And this person yeah. seems to be that, I, you know, the line, I never thought I'd see myself as a hero. And it is sad when you study that there were many people that life that were afterwards, the survivors and the first responders. So yeah, I, I just great choice. And I do think it's one of those songs, as you said really well, it grows up on you. I am not, it doesn't, the kids singing Waiting on a Sunny Day does not diminish the song for me. I think it's a fun song. I love the song. You know, I'm okay with that. But, you know, right away, you know, The Rising itself is the only song that I've heard live every time I've seen him. But this is one of those where you go, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wait on Holiday Day is a nice and, and funny and, and uplifting pop song. Right. And he, he, he tends to, to throw one of those songs on each and every record he ever made. Right. Uh, I remember an interview with, with uh, uh, little Steven saying that Bruce could have been the best pop author in the, in the history of pop music. But no, he has to go with the rock and roll. So Steve was always debating him about what's, what to include on the record and not. And for instance, Save My Love was such a huge Steve's favorite for being included on the uh, Darkness of the Age of Town. And Bruce refused it. Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. And now when I mentioned it, I have to say that the only song I, was, I heard once and never again for a such a long time was let's be friends yeah why i never got into i believe it's the only song written by bruce that i never took time to read the lyrics okay the title itself was so easy for me yeah that i couldn't understand how can you wait jewel save my love and put a song called Let's Be Friends on this record. Furthermore, there was 15, 15 songs on the ride. It could have been 14 without right. uh, yeah. uh, Let's Be Friends. But after 10 or 15 years, I'm not so anxious to press skip when it comes along. Uh, I got used to it. So every now and then I, I play it till the end and I'm not skipping it. But that's the only song of this record that simply didn't fit to me. Okay. It was too obvious message to say after all those songs uh, on, on the record with very sick theme and characters. Yeah. 
this one was, I don't know, it, it was one song too much, too many, one, one, one song that should have been thrown out of the rack. At, at, that's it. But I got used to it. So it, it's not yeah. my favorite and it never will be, but I'm okay with it. Now. I made peace with the song. Yeah. So that, that's the second song we discussed how you feel about it but waiting on a sunny day may be washed out during the shows for so many years but it, it, when it comes on the record it's not a really not a big deal to i say that but for let's be friends yeah give me your thoughts on mary's place mary's place is maybe my second or third favorite song on the record Okay. It was. It reminded me of a much younger Bruce and the East Street Band. It reminded me yeah. of Born to Run Face. It reminded me with the lyrics, with the construction and composition of the song, and it had such a contagious power of of something good is happening in that song in that party with Mary and her place and everything even if it's not actually 100% happy song but it has something that brings so much to this record in a sense of togetherness and what I mentioned before how to continue our life after what happened. Mary's Place is My City of Ruins is definitely number one song mary's place nothing man into the fire and the rising they change places depending on my personal moment of life or the way i feel yeah when i listen to, to this so it's absolutely one of the one of the best i really love it yeah little details like uh, seven pictures of buddha profit on my thumb and stuff like that i felt like he forgot how to use that kind of writing many years before and now he came back with it for some reason i don't know why i don't care why i just loved it yeah and i always think of that furniture's out on the front porch it reminds me when i was growing up my grandparents owned a dairy farm and they yeah. would grow a lot of their own food. And we would be on the front porch with tubs, wash tubs of green peas, English peas or shell peas, purple hole peas. And we'd be shelling them, right? And yeah. my uncle and aunt and my grandmother and my mom would all be there telling stories and laughing and joking. And that was always this pleasant memory to me. But yeah, I get that. The rising you talked about is just amazing. And the imagery of that catfish dancing on the end of a line is such a beautiful image of just growing up in the South or going anywhere where you're fishing, right? This whole idea of the lake and the sunshine shining it, it does give you that feeling of life. Yeah, with so many uh, everyday detail that we took for granted for, I don't know, maybe entire life. It, like, it's something that we grew up with, like the sun or the sea or the, or the river or the wood surrounding our, our place uh, of living. And it's there and it's okay. But when, when you realize, one can realize that the importance of that things uh, uh, after uh, hearing uh, lyrics like that. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden say, yeah, that's something that I grew up with. That's something that formed me. That's something that left house this morning, bells were ringing and filled the air. I can imagine, I read his uh, autobiography, Born to Run, and I can easily relate to that and imagine he's growing up in a freehold in a Catholic community where everything was, uh, was related to the local church because here in Croatia, especially in a little villages or little uh, cities, there was also a church giving you time every hour during the whole day calling for mass, announcing someone died in, in that village or the funeral is starting. So I, I was 
in a moment, I, I recognize something that I grew up with. Yeah. And sometimes we don't get those things just like that. We, we overseen them easily. And all of a sudden you hear two, two verses or one verse and, and yeah, that's it. So I, I like the, the way he wrote about those little details in our lives and moments and signs, let's say, that like he, he had an urge to, to bring the people back to their roots. And our roots are, in my humble opinion, deeply human. So let's be humans again. Let's never forget September 11th, but let's be humans. Let's go connected us before we disconnected ourselves from our lives and community, the earth itself. Something and, like that. Maybe I'm overstating that. No. I don't know, but it was no, my feeling. I totally agree with you. And I think also the, you know, some Bruce has good bones. Right. And so that there's City of Ruins originally about Asbury Park and, and just trying to bring that 9 11. And then with Sandy happened, right? And yeah. the whole devastation there. And the rising has been used on a couple of years ago for the Democratic convention. They, they play the rising in between commercials. So it is a really, it is. Definitely one of his classics. I'm going to throw you a curveball just for a minute, yeah. if you don't mind. All no. right. So you talked about how the rising was the return of the E Street Band. And let's skip to, because you talked about Wrecking Ball, where the band was hitting all their strides. Right now, they've done multiple albums in a row. And I always loved Wrecking Ball. The... I just think it's a really strong album with a lot of different, a lot of more cultural influences with there's a little bit of Irish, a little bit of here, or this, there. So you had mentioned that you were also interested in Wrecking Ball. Talk to me a little bit about, do you see a connection between these two? Let's say Wrecking Ball was not written in, in, in a sense of bringing back to ourselves and our community yeah, and being human again. Uh, right. It was more a rebel record against the elites, against yeah. uh, something that makes our uh, lives even miserable sometimes. Easy money, like, the, forget, I forget the title of the song, We Take Care of Our Own. Yeah, it was exactly. Directly, direct response to to uh, Katrina, and what was happening mm -hmm. in in Plains. Uh, it was more. Let's pay attention to those who uh, are who were trying to do their best to bring us down and not let us evolve as humans, as a people with empathy, because of the money and interests. Yeah. It, it, it is a contrast album compared to The Rise. As I mentioned before, there was no pay, no revenge on The Rise. Yeah. And here on Wrecking Ball, there's a lot of let's vote against that. Let's yeah. fight this or that. It's yeah. not right and it's not our way. Yeah. And maybe that was the reason why. Wrecking Ball was Wrecking Ball the Rising, Wrecking Ball the Rising. It was my yeah. dilemma. I'm not saying it's a better record than Magic. Yeah. It's definitely better than working on a dream. And it, in a way, it brought something new, like you mentioned, Irish music, Scottish music, uh, folk music, in a way that he used uh, those kinds of uh, elements in the songs for a very long time. Yeah. And it was refreshing. Yeah, I loved it. Especially when I realized Land of Hope and Dreams is going to be uh, recorded in studio and published. I heard that song many times on shows before, starting with the Rising Tour a couple of years back. Yeah. And I always loved that song. It was really easily be one of my top five songs ever. Oh, yeah. I love that record. But 
as I said, rising came in a very difficult and very sensitive moment. And I was curious of uh, his interpretation of what happened or what will be, will be happening in near future and how he thinks about it, how he feels about it, what are his stands. And the answer was expected to me, but it made me really happy to see I was expecting the right thing. And I received that from that record. It was very hard to not point finger at someone. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Okay. It was visible even then in all that chaos that something terribly went wrong. And I'm not saying we have to, uh, in the first two or days or, or two weeks, we don't have to get all the answers. Right. It would be great to get some answers within a reasonable amount of time. But we, now we have to deal with the deaths, we have to deal with wounded, we have to deal with destruction, we have to deal with people who survived, and we have to deal uh, with what is in the next week or next month, how will that affect on us? And every call on let's find who's to blame easily lead to innocent victims and casualties unnecessary. So that was the significance of that moment that Bruce very, very nicely placed on this record. Let's deal with us and let not this event affect us to become less human. Yeah. It was very powerful uh, message he sent on this record. So back to Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball is a mix of hope and rebellion st stand and pointing finger on wrong things or wrong people or wrong attitude, but also a call for like you uh, let's be what we and let keep what made this nation great. Let's be inclusive. Let's be humans. Let's be let's cherish our values in a way that we did for a couple hundred years. Let's fight for what's right once again. Unfortunately, we've gone, I'm not saying wrong, but the world is different than in the 60s. If, if something like that happened in the 60s, general response of everyday Joe and, and Mary will be much stronger and, and much more powerful than nowadays. I agree. We live in a world of mobile phones and click bites and everything is the news for a couple of minutes. And even yeah. this you know the tragedy of, of such a huge scale went very soon in perceiving that what was going yeah. on and I'm saying that from the other part of the world I yeah no, no I had no one who was wounded or vividly that day when I heard the news about what was, what was happening in, in the United States, and I just couldn't believe it. And it really shook my world because it was global, a significant, a significant of violence, of terrorism, of uh, destruction. And after that, the world has changed quite a bit. Yeah. In terms of security, of trust, of so many things that's the difference between the rising and wrecking ball wrecking ball is more of let's fight for what was good and what made us people that we are now let's get it back to us and the rising was like let's be humans let's produce more, more victims it is than it was already made yeah, the right the back to you, Jesse. Yeah, the famous story, right, of the guy yelling, "We need you, Bruce." And uh, yeah, gosh, said. Any other thoughts before I let you go? I would like to mention the song "Paradise." Okay. As conclusion, because it, it has a very interesting storyline. It's about a suicide bomber. It's about uh, uh, 
wife who lost her husband. Yeah. It's and and still there is no you have this different, very different character described in this song. Yeah. And it's just standing in their own shoes, explaining their the moments. Unfortunately, that is so sadly that our choices are our choices. And if it affects someone else, we want to blame, but you what's left of it. So it's not trying to find a guilty party. It's not it's just explaining or drawing the, 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 the scenario where I'm this what I am and I'll do what I want to do because that's my mission. Or I yeah. have to deal with this now, even I, I never wanted to do it, but I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm not good at, in English to explain the nuances of, of this song and the, the psychological moment of characters in this song, but it's one of the deepest and one of the toughest songs on the record. And maybe on, on, on a series of Bruce Springsteen's album, this one is really tricky. Uh, that's, a, that's a song that should be, I don't know, uh, someone should write a, a big uh, essay of about this song. It has so many levels, it has so many emotions mixed and everything comes to the person itself at the end. But as I said, maybe I'm not good enough with my English to I, go I, the way I want it to go. On this 30 days, right, I just had someone talking about Nebraska and the actual mentioning the title track from the perspective of a killer. All right. And I know that, and I'm drawing a blank on the title of the song, but my friend Sarah Hickman wrote a song from the perspective of the mother of someone who did a mass killing and how her perspective of that's still her baby that's still yeah. her child even though they did some horrible things and i think that bruce tries to i don't want to over emphasize but i think as an artist he tries to tell different perspectives from different voices and different viewpoints because he does understand his viewpoint as a 70 year old white guy amazed in America is a very different perspective than someone else. Even during the first campaign when Donald Trump was running for president, he, Bruce acknowledged that he is speaking to a demographics that feels unheard and we yeah. need to respect that they are not hurting. So I think as an artist, that's what he tries to do. And I think he does it well. It is not necessarily a song that you turn it up and, and you're going to rock to the way you do waiting on a sunny day, but it no, helps. It's a contemplating yeah. song. It is, it is part of, yeah, a part of the image you are creating with the album. Yeah, the way he used uh, instruments on a uh, uh, world's apart. Yeah, very Middle Eastern feel in a rock song. Yeah, written by famous American rock author, but he uses that in a very nice way. It was not like I'm trying to copy that for yeah. my song for my. I'm not trying to make an ethno song. It was just elements of Middle East ethno music incorporated in a rock song. And that's also the perspective of the, the song itself, the fuse, like he's in, in, in this paradise is trying to show other perspectives of different characters involved in this tragical events. Yeah, said. Any other thoughts, my friend, uh, before I let you go? Uh, what can I say? I can. I don't know. I, I don't want to bother you anymore with this Mary's leaving or not leaving last time. So <laughs> uh, you already uh, had everything. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. We had everything about that. And final thoughts. I think that Bruce made three excellent records in, in the last, let's say, two decades. Maybe four. Maybe even four. Okay. But for me, the rising stance better than Magic, better than uh, uh, Wrecking Ball, better than Letter to You, simply because it was deeply connected to a tragical event and he still remained guy from the neighborhood with so many with, with empathy uh, he's still a human being respects other humans and calling for remain humans and not to not to distract ourselves in, in a violence or revenge or some deviant thoughts or behavior that will make us less human or that would make us equal to, to those who are capable of organizing or at the end, guys who flew the, those planes. It's really hard to, to write about them, but they did something very bad and tragic and sad. Let's not be them. So yeah. That album was perfect album for that moment in our lives. And it did it in an amazing way. And if anyone asked me in the last 20 years, what record would you recommend by Bruce Springsteen, I would go for the right. Nice. Very nice. If someone wants to reach you, what's the best way? We have our official website with all, with all social media contacts there, www.7andcounting.com. Okay. Or 7 and Counting, formal media formerly known as twitter all uh, right facebook also seven and counting and uh i'm the guy who does all maintenance and administration of those accounts so if you try to reach me you can reach me there if you try to reach the band you will reach me again wherever there. you go for seven and counting you got so much for spending some of your saturday afternoon with me this is so much love visiting with you. Let's do it again soon. Um, I, will, I will be at your disposal again, uh, raining the whole afternoon. <laughs> uh, even even if it was sun, I would even if if it was sun out there, I will stick with you because I enjoyed it really. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. But now when it's raining, I can talk to you for an hour more. No, <laughs> exactly. No, uh, let's get it. Let's yeah. get it. Let's get it. And you have many shows to, to produce for uh, 30 on 30s. I wish you all the best with that. And looking forward to episodes to hear what other people think about it. my favorite records and those not so favorite. Sounds wonderful. Listener, I did want you to, we're saying this at the end of every episode, clear your mind, open your heart, pull this CD or vinyl or digital recording put it on and remember that feeling of the excitement of new e street band music and the healing power of this after all the tragedy of 9 11 and re-experience that with fresh ears i know you'll appreciate it thank yeah. you for oh, yeah. your insight nico i appreciate it listeners remember to be safe be kind and we will talk to you soon Goodbye.